Glare and halos after cataract surgery. Preventable, fixable, and often misdiagnosed. Today, I'm talking about glare halos and blurry vision after cataract surgery. A small amount of glare or rings around light can be normal and it can happen almost with any type of lens. But when glare and halos start to change the way you live, when you avoid driving at night, feel unsafe with oncoming headlights, or struggle in certain lighting, that's no longer just normal. That's a problem that deserves a real solution. Now, if you're just thinking about having cataract surgery, I will tell you what warning signs to watch for so you don't have to deal with this issue after surgery. This includes practical questions you should ask your surgeon during your consultation. Hi, I'm Dr. Ilan Cohen, a cataract and a premium lens surgeon in New York with 25 years of experience. I developed a structured way to diagnose and treat glare and halos. I'll break down that approach in simple language so you can understand your options before you agree to any more lasers or surgeries. Let's start with this. If every light at night looks like it's exploding, you're not being too picky. You're noticing something real. The question is where the light is being distorted. You can think of the eye like a camera. The front clear window of the eye, that's the cornea, is like the front glass of the camera. The artificial lens we put during cataract surgery is like the camera lens inside. If the front of the window is a little warped or if the internal lens doesn't match your eye well, light gets scattered instead of focused. Once we figure out which part is causing the trouble, the front window, the internal lens, or both, we can often do something about it. That's the big picture. But the critical step is this. You have to separate window problems from the lens problems before anyone starts adding more lasers or more drops. If you skip that step, it's very easy to bounce from one procedure to another without ever fixing the real cause. So let's talk about where these problems really come from and what you can do about them. Now, glare and halos sound mysterious, but they're really just physics. When you look at the light, your eye is supposed to focus that light into a sharp point on the retina. Glare and halos happen when that light gets scattered. Instead of a clean point, you see rings, starbursts, or a fuzzy glow. This tends to show up in certain situations, night driving, headlights coming towards you, street lights, or bright signs or screens in a dim room. Many people are reassured that their eye looks fine, that their numbers and measurements are fine, and that they just need to adjust over time. Sometimes the next step offered is another laser procedure or another set of drops to see if it helps. The problem is if nobody has actually asked, is this coming from the window or from the lens inside, then all of those steps are guesses. To really understand glare and halos, after cataract surgery, we need to go back to what happened before surgery because a lot of these problems are actually set up in the planning phase. Before cataract surgery, not every eye is a good match for every type of premium lens. Some corneas are simply not ideal partners for certain multifocal lenses. If we ignore that, the risk of glare and halos goes way up. Here are some of the red flags on the cornea, the front window of the eye, that I look for very carefully before choosing a multifocal lens. First, eyes that had LASIK, PRK, or RK in the past. These corneas have already been reshaped. They can see very well, but the optics are often a bit more irregular, especially at night. Some of these eyes do perfectly fine with multifocal lenses. Others are much more sensitive and end up with more glare and halos. Second, corneal scars. Any scar on the front window of the eye can scatter light. Now, imagine adding a multifocal lens that already splits light into different focal points. 
you're putting a scattered light on top of a split light. That combination is much more likely to produce halos and starbursts. Third, surface conditions like ABMD, anterior basement membrane dystrophy. In simple terms, the skin layer in front of the cornea is not perfectly smooth. It can be a bit bumpy. That disrupts the tear film and makes the optics noisy, especially in low light. And then there is Salzman nodular degeneration. These are raised nodules on the cornea. They distort the smooth curve of the front window and cause local areas of distortion and scatter. When I see post-LASIK or RK, scars, ABMD, or Salzman before cataract surgery, I do not just go straight to a standard diffractive multifocal lens and hope for the best. I either adjust the lens choice or at the very least, I have a very direct conversation with the patient about the higher risk of glare and halos. Sometimes I recommend a different type of lens, such as the monofocal or non-diffractive extended depth of focus lens, which is also called EDOF. Those tend to be gentler on the optics. The point is simple. Many glare and halo problems after surgery are not random. They are often the result of a mismatch between a sensitive cornea and a complex lens design. But maybe that discussion never happened. You already had surgery. You already have the glare. The question now is, what can you do? This is where the structured post-op approach becomes very important. After surgery, I don't start by adding more procedures. I start with diagnosis. Specifically, I start by testing whether your cornea, that front window, is the main culprit. To do that, I use a hard contact lens test in the office. A hard contact lens has a very smooth, perfectly round front surface. When we place it on the eye, it covers many of the small bumps and irregularities on the cornea. In effect, it forces an irregular cornea to become regular. Here's what I do. I put this hard contact lens on your eye and then I try to recreate the situations that bother you. I dim the room. I have you look at different types of lights coming from different angles. I ask you to compare what you see with and without the lens. If your glare and halos are mainly coming from irregularities on the cornea, then putting that smooth lens on should reduce those symptoms significantly. If your symptoms improve clearly with the hard contact lens test, that's a positive result. It tells me that your cornea is playing a major role. If nothing changes, or it's minimal, then the problem is more likely the internal lens implant. A lot of evaluations stop at numbers and maps. The heart contact lens test is different. It's a functional test. It asks, how do you actually see when we temporarily smooth the surface of your cornea? Now you understand the idea. What do we do with that information? If that test is positive, we focus on the cornea. If it's negative, we focus on the lens. Let's start with the positive side. When the heart contact lens test is clearly positive, the next question is this. Can we make your real cornea behave more like a smooth lens, but without you having to wear a heart contact lens forever? For many patients, the answer is yes, using a treatment called topography-guided PRK or TGPRK. PRK is a laser treatment done on the surface of the eye. It reshapes the very front layers of your cornea. Topography-guided means that the laser is not just treating basic glasses prescription, it's using a detailed map of your cornea, all the little hills and valleys, and it's programmed to smooth out those irregularities. I use a specific protocol that I adopted and modified for this unique purpose. The goal here is not just 2020 on the chart. The goal is a smoother window that scatters less light so your existing intraocular lens, even if it's multifocal, can work in a cleaner optical system. After this procedure, 
many patients notice less glow around lights, smaller halos, and less spiky or streaky lights at night. Night driving becomes more comfortable. The image quality feels calmer and more stable. Of course, topography guided PRK is not for every single eye. I look at your corneal thickness, your topography, your healing tendencies, and your overall health. But when the heart contact lens test is clearly positive and the exam supports it, topography guided PRK can be a powerful way to reduce glare and halos that are coming from the cornea. In my experience, Topography guided PRK helps in about 80% of cases that complain of generally blurred vision or glare and halos after cataract surgery. This is consistent with a Harvard study that used TGPRK without a heart contact lens test and got improvement on 23 out of 28 patients. So that's the path when the window is the problem. But what if the heart contact lens test does almost nothing for your symptoms. If the view doesn't change, then the polishing of the window won't solve it. That's when we turn our attention to the lens implant itself. So if the heart contact lens test is negative, the most likely source of problem is the intraocular lens, the artificial lens that replaced your cataract. In those cases, one of the options I consider is an IOL exchange. An IOL exchange means we go back in, remove the current implant, and replace it with a different implant lens that is much better match for your eye. Reasons to do this might include a lens design that your eye simply does not tolerate well, a lens that is not centered or is tilted, or a lens power that leaves your eye with an unexpected prescription that worsens your visual quality. I only recommend an IOL exchange after we've done the proper workup and ruled out the cornea as the main driver. I don't want you going through another surgery unless the lens truly looks like the limiting factor. An IOL exchange is more complex than the original cataract surgery, and it should be done by someone experienced with these cases. But when it's the right move, changing the lens can make a major difference in glare and halos. There is one more piece that can make this easier or much harder, and it's very common, the YAG capsulotomy. A YAG capsulotomy is a laser procedure many patients eventually have after cataract surgery. Over time, the thin membrane behind the implant, called the posterior capsule, can become cloudy and blur vision. The YAG laser makes an opening in that membrane so light can pass through clearly. When that membrane is truly the problem, a YAG capsulotomy is an excellent tool. But in the setting of unexplained glare and halos, timing matters. If no one has figured out whether your problem is in front of the window or in the internal lens and a YAG is done just to see if it helps, that can create issues. Once that membrane is opened, the lens is less supported from behind. If we later decide the lens has to be exchanged, the surgery becomes more technically challenging and riskier. So in my protocol, YAG is not the first step when glare and halos are a mystery. It comes later, after we have a clear diagnosis and a clear plan. First, we evaluate the cornea carefully. Second, we perform the heart contact lens test and the real world condition. If the cornea is the culprit, we address that, often with TGPRK, when appropriate. If the lens is the problem, we consider a lens exchange. Only when we are confident the posterior capsule itself is causing trouble do we move to a YAG capsulotomy. If you skip that sequence, it's easy to close doors you may need later. Let me turn this into practical steps you can actually use. If you have not had cataract surgery yet and you are thinking about a multifocal lens, ask your surgeon, is my cornea a good partner for this lens? Ask specifically if you have any prior LASIK, PRK, or RK surgery. Ask if there are corneal scars, ABMD, or Salzman nodules. Ask how those conditions affect your risk of glare and halos 
with a multifocal lens and ask whether another lens type, such as a monofocal or a non-diffractive EDAF lens, might give you more reliable quality of vision. If you already had cataract surgery and you're dealing with glare and halos now, ask your doctor if they have experience with or feel comfortable performing a hard contact lens test. A bit of caution here, you never want to force a doctor to do something they're not comfortable with. A lot depends on the results of this test and we want to get it right. And this is not a test many surgeons perform routinely. Ask whether a topography guided surface treatment like TGPRK is an option if the cornea proves to be irregular and your symptoms improve with a hard contact lens. And before any YAG laser, ask very directly. If this YAG does not help, will it make future lens exchange harder or riskier? You deserve clear, honest answers. You also deserve a surgeon who understands both the cornea and the lens side of the problem, not just someone looking at a few numbers. Choose by experience, by detail, and by whether there is a logical step-by-step -step plan for your specific eye. Here's the bottom line. Glare and halos after cataract surgery are usually not just in your head, and they are not automatic price to pay for surgery. They often come from specific flexible issues, either in the front of the eye or in the lens implant or in a mismatch between the two. With a structured approach, Careful pre-op screening, smart lens selection, post-op hard contact lens testing, TGPRK when the cornea is the culprit, IOL exchange when the lens is the culprit, many patients get the comfortable vision they expected. You are not asking for too much when you want to see well after cataract surgery. This is your vision for the rest of your life. Hey, if you're dealing with glare and halos after cataract surgery, what have you been told so far and what workup has actually been done? Share your experience in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond to them.